Let me put that like that. Yo, it's the gas. <clears throat> hello, dude. Where the fuck is Melvin? I don't know. Hi, how's it going, guest? Hey, hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> yeah, we're excited to see you. We can't wait. What? <laughs> You're gonna be here in ten minutes. Ten minutes. Dude, where the fuck is Melvin? I don't know. He's always doing this. When was the last time you seen him? I saw him yesterday. I saw him thirty minutes ago. <laughs> don't worry, children. I have arrived. <laughs> okay. Have you heard the news? Jonathan, tell him the news. Melvin Shut has... the fuck up, Jonathan. I have officially hit 100 subscribers on YouTube. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank me. Thank myself. Because without me, none of this would be possible. Jonathan, can you go grab the glasses for my boys right now? Yes, thank your you. majesty. Thank you. Joel. Drink up. It's good. It's, it's my juice. It's my no, juice. No, Melvin, we have to get ready for the episode. Dude, All right? Are you, you, you going to drink it? Or? You want to drink that? I mean, if you're not going to drink it, I'll drink it. No, it's alcohol, drink right? That. No, That's we're not going to drink that. <laughs> it's, it's Jehovah's juice. What? What? Jesus Christ, no. It's not Jehovah's juice. It's Nobody wants to drink that, Melvin. We have to get back to the episode. The guest is almost here, okay, okay. and you're not even sitting on the couch. Okay, you're right. You're right. We have to sit at the bar. You're right. You're you're right. right. I'll go fix the bar. Okay. Yeah, I'll go to the bar. Just all set right. up these cameras right here. I'll go set up the bar. I'm going to do the lights. That's all I know how to all do. Right. All right. Jesus Christ. All right. So, Joel, if you want to get the... Ah, drink this shit! Oh, yeah. Hey guys, welcome to episode 3 of the M Word. Today's guest is just as tall as me, believe it or not. He's a little thicker, he's a little thick boy, but still just as funny, just as smart. It was really impressive. We talked about a plethora of things. We talked about comedy, life, cults, being afraid of dying, as he put it, fear of mortality, which sounds like a video game. Help me welcome Armando Torres. My guy Armando, thank you so much for coming out, man. Yeah, bro. And I feel like we're like long lost, like either twins or cousins or yeah. some shit, because you're fucking 25, just 25, like me. 25, yeah. You're fucking. Apparently, he's like 6'5. He's not 6'5. Okay, all right. We're like the same height. We're both little thicky boys. Yeah, a little, a little well, yeah, a lot of thicky boys. We're both comedians, and the craziest part is we both started doing stand-up comedy at age 17. At age 17. In fucking, <laughs> L in Southern California. Yeah, I started in I started in Los Angeles. That's well, so I started in the Valley, technically. Well, so that's not Los Angeles. That's, that's what I said, that's what I fucking <laughs> said, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. I, uh, yeah, I started in uh, Flappers Burbank after watching Bill Burr do stand-up, and then I went to an open mic, and they were like, yeah, anyone could do this. And I was like, they can't. You gotta be like a famous person to do stand-up. Yeah. And then apparently that's not true at all. It's you not. You don't even have to be funny. You don't even have to be good. No, they'll yeah. just let you do it. Yeah. Yeah. And it loses you money, too. That's the yeah. other thing. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we uh, started at 17. Wow. That's crazy. It is, yeah. So when you told me, I was just like, that's what that's that's me. That's what I say all the time. You know what? A lot of people ask me, and some of our mutual friends as well, ask me, like, how was it um, starting at 17? And they think that it's a negative thing. Like, not negative thing as, like, they're hating, but, like, they're like, I wouldn't want to start at 17 because it feels like a lot of pressure, a lot of danger, a lot of, like... <laughs> Dan yeah, danger yeah. for them, for the yeah, smartphone. Yeah, 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 for yeah. the old motherfuckers. <laughs> no, but it is fucking dangerous, dog. There's a lot of jealousy, a lot of drugs, yeah. a lot of grown women that would, like, go after you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, like, be predatory. That's what a lot of people don't talk about. Yeah, man. A lot of grown-ass women. Like, I had, like, grown women buying me drinks. Like trying to seduce me and shit like and that. Like 18, 19. Bro, and at the time you're like, bro, I'm the mother, I'm that motherfucker, yeah. dog. Like yeah. I have all these fucking, dude. 
Like, I have your mom on my fucking, you know, I have your mom on, on <laughs> speed dial or whatever. Right, you know what I'm bro. saying? Yeah. But then when you grow up, you're like, oh my God, they were abusing me. <laughs> they, were, they were taking advantage of me, of it's my youngness. so fucking weird, because especially, like, if you're, you, you, I, we were talking about this before. You grew up, like, big as shit your whole life, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, same here. So I never felt like, all right, like, uh, I talk about this with my mom before. Like, it's crazy that she lives a life where, like, she walks to her car and she has to have, like, keys in between her fucking fingers. Yeah, like, yeah. And that's just instinct, right? Yeah. But then you and me, we can walk, like, down any street in South Central at yeah. night and yeah. just, like, fucking loud, yeah. confident, whatever. Yeah. But so you have this mentality in your head the entire time. At least I did, like, most of my life where it's like, no one's going to take advantage of me. No one's going to do yeah. anything. I'm too big for that to happen. Yeah. And then it turns out that I'm dumb as shit and people can emotionally and well, yeah. Take well, advantage. Well, the crazy of thing is, is that they can't, they can't take advantage of us the the regular way yeah. or the popular way they take it they they did not take not but like they did take advantage of us in a different way in a quieter way in a more you know psychological manipulative way not physically not you know by scaring us but like by by you know they gas you up exactly playing yeah. into our you know subconscious into our you know like giving us nice words of of, of encouragement and stuff like that and it's yeah. just like it's just like in a way it's a little more cynical. It, both ways are it's fucking terrible, but but yeah, this is that's like a thing that a lot of people don't talk about. And if I had a kid and they wanted to do stand up at 16, 17, 18, I would tell them, "Wait till you're 21, bro." But if you want to start it, bro, I'll take you. I'll be there with you. Yeah. Or 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 once you're done, once you get off the stage, come fucking home, dude. Come yeah, home. Don't don't go, don't go to the hangs. Yeah, cuz it's fuck out. Don't get me wrong, it's fucking fun as shit, dude. Yeah, everyone wants to hang out with you afterwards. Big comedians want to like talk to you. Women want to talk to you. Like guys that are older than you, like that you think are, look cool, they want to talk to you. You know what I mean? But like, it's so alluring. Yeah, it is alluring. I did uh, one of the biggest problems I had when I was starting at seventeen is that you know, well, first of all, it's so hard to relate to adults. Yeah. Like I can't think of a joke that a thirty-year-old man is gonna laugh at mm -hmm. because tomorrow I gotta go back to school and yeah. ask permission to take a shit. You know, like <laughs> yeah, it, doesn't, yeah, yeah. it doesn't fucking yeah. work out. And then it's hard to find that relatability, but also when you're still, so I was 17, I started comedy, I would do like two mics a night, or not a night, a fucking, a week. And then as soon as I graduated high school, when I was 18, I did comedy like nonstop. Like yeah. I, I just, I threw everything that I had into it. It was the only thing I wanted to do. I got taken advantage of a guy who, on one of the first like shows I did, he came over, he handed me a card, he was like, yo, what's up? I'm trying to find comedians to go on tour. And I'm like, less than a year into comedy, and I'm like, oh shit, this, this is, is how it. it happens. Yeah, this is it, yeah. I'm famous now, yeah. fuck everyone. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that guy was the same shit. He's just preying on the naivety of fucking a person who doesn't know how the industry works. So that shit would happen. And then, because I was so into comedy, I lost relatability with normal people. Like, because I spent from 17 to, I think I stopped doing it at like 23. Not stopped doing comedy, but I stopped. All right, let me explain. From like 17 to 23, I only did comedy. Like, mm -hmm. I lived for comedy. Yeah. I would do mics every night, I would write. Uh, I quit my job. I worked at Legoland as a master model builder. What the? F really? Yeah. I built Lego uh, buildings and like people Holy for like a living. Holy shit. But it made me so unhappy. Why? Uh, I, I just hated it. It was creative, but in this way that puts you in a box. Mm. And all I wanted to do was do stand up. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that like having a good job would make me super happy, but it just made me really fucking depressed. Yeah. So I was like, I only want to do stand up. So I quit. I moved back to LA and then I was living in my car and uh, I was doing comedy every night and I was super happy. And then this thing happened where I realized that like all the jokes I were thinking of weren't funny to like normal people. Like I had this, I like, you start to go insane when all you do is comedy. Like I remember one time, I was dating this girl and she she uh, she went to USC and I was staying in her dorm room and I had all my clothes in like a plastic shopping bag and she was like, hey, why don't you get a backpack? And I was like, I don't need a backpack. Backpacks are $30. This shit was 10 cents. Everyone wants you to think you need a backpack. You don't need a fucking backpack. That's just the way the fucking world works. And then I was like, oh shit, I'm crazy. I'm a, I called backpacks a conspiracy theory and that's too far. Like I can't, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, have yeah. to. So from 23 onwards to now, like 23 to 25, I've 
realize that you have to like go live life or else mm. you're not going to have anything to talk about. Yeah. So yeah, because yeah. I was so enthralled in all of it, because it's so exciting, every it night is, is yeah. fucking amazing. Well, I always tell people that like it's one of the hardest things I've ever done, but also one of the most awesome things. Like, you know, there's some nights that you're on cloud nine mm -hmm. and you, you're like, you know, this phrase is common where like, oh, my life's a movie, but like you're really living in a movie. You're hanging out with celebrities and you're meeting like, you know, people that are way out of your league, both women and men, like all that stuff. But then there's some nights that it makes you want to fucking kill yourself, bro. Yeah. It, it puts you in such a hole of despair. And that's kind of a, like, like seasoned comedians just say like, yeah, it's going to happen. You just kind of keep moving forward because better days will come. Better shows will come. You know, a lot of people just stop doing it because of the, that. Those despairing days are just too much to handle. Like, uh, you know, you I'm sure you've had those days. Like, what, what have you done to like fucking keep it keep it pushing keep the train moving to keep also do like, you want a drink oh i would love a drink yeah, yeah. anything with whiskey and it would be whiskey, amazing yeah. so yeah what do I, you do? Uh, yeah i comedy is such a weird thing where like you said like there's the the highs are insane like yes. you can be you can do a fucking uh thank you thank you, you so go. much yep. you can do a fucking a show at like a theater, like a sold out yeah. theater where you open for somebody and it's just, it's luck, you know? It's yeah. all like, I got here because I knew somebody, knew someone that saw knew somebody, somebody. Yeah, yeah. whatever, so. Salute, bro. Salute. Thanks for coming. And um, you can have the best show of your whole fucking life up to that point and then the next day, like, you're not shit. Like, you can either, yeah. I remember one time, like, I, I got uh, picked to film a pilot. Mm -hmm. I was filming a pilot and uh, I was also doing like some theater shows with this comedian that does a bunch of shit around the country. I was opening for him, it felt great. Uh, and I had to go ask my manager at a Jimmy John's to like take time off. I was like, I need a week off. She's like, no, you can't yeah. take a week off. And I was like, what? I'll fucking leave this Jimmy John's dog. You think I care about sandwiches? I'm 23 and I work at a sandwich shop. Yeah. I'm fucking, I'm gonna kill myself. I swear to God, <laughs> I, I hate this. I can't yeah. talk about bread anymore, dude. Yeah. And so, like, that's what sucks is that you, because it's so fast-paced, you need to really stop and enjoy the good part of what you're doing, like, those really high highs, and not think about, like, the next day when you go back. Like, just live in that moment and be there and be really happy, and that's what I've been trying to do a lot more of. Yeah. That's what makes it feel good, because otherwise, like, I mean... Last year, begin like t end of 2019, beginning of 2020, I was on the road all the time. I was doing shit. I was supposed to film stuff for these fucking TV shows. I was super excited, um, and then 2020 happened. Yeah, and that's like the ultimate bad day for a comic. You oh know? yeah, yeah, it's, it's still bad. Yeah, and yeah. not just you know, not just for comedy. It's bad for everyone. The world, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. for yeah, the world at large. But yeah, it's just like you just got to take the good with the bad and just. Be okay with like, I don't know. In my head now, what's made me feel better is every time a, something goes wrong, I'm in my head, I'm like, this is, I'm not like, this is the worst thing that happened. I'm like, this is gonna be so fucking funny when I tell it to somebody. Oh, later. yeah. I feel like, the same. I feel like once people figure that out, or I don't know if regular people have this mentality, but when comedians figure that out, oh, everything just becomes a fucking joke. But like, in yeah. the best way possible, like, not in a disrespectful manner, but like, it's true, like if some fuck shit happens, yeah, you might feel like shit that day, but the next day you're already like thinking of like jokes and stuff like How the that. Fuck and, would I make Cause it? some yeah. of my best jokes are from my worst days. Yeah. And I feel like when I, re I realized that when I was like, right before I turned 20, I was like, I'm just funny just for f being funny. Like people laugh, but they're not gonna remember me. They don't remember me. Like, like I always say this quote, like people, People uh, forget what you said, people forget what you do, but people won't forget how you made them feel. So I was just like, I was like, who are my favorite comedians? And who, what movies and shows do I remember? And it's like the shit that affects me or is, is relatable or, or teaches me something. So I'm like, I started talking about real personal deep issues that were really bothering me. Obviously I made them funny. And I just felt like just a, a, a transition. I felt like I ascended to another level. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, it, it not only helped my career, but it helped my personal mental, mental health, my, my emotional health and all that. I felt like I was viewing the world in a different light and yeah. it just, it made me feel like powerful. It made me feel like I had like a superpower. Cause everything's funny. And that's yeah. why I, I love that mentality of like, 
Well, like I said, like the worst things I'd ever had, like one of my favorite jokes to tell is a joke of uh, like I shit my pants as an adult. And in when it happened in the moment, I was like, this is the most embarrassing thing that's ever fucking happened. Like I shit my pants. Now I just got to drive home with shit, sh- shit seat. Oh. And like, because I was in my car, so yeah. I shit my fucking car. Too, yeah. you know? Like I, I, it was the most embarrassing, awful thing that ever happened to me. And then it became this joke that was so good, like I closed my sets with it. Damn, it's your closer. Like, it's my closer. Yeah. It's fucking great. Yeah. And it's... It's it's evolved into this thing where like, if I hadn't have shit my pants, I wouldn't have this great joke. And that was the seed that built this plant of like, any like I said, any bad thing that ever happens to you, if you think of it as like this is just going to be a story to tell later, yeah, then it becomes a lot. Maybe it's like a coping mechanism. Maybe it's uh, I don't know. But it's it's such a it's a more fun way to view the world. Yeah. Because I never feel like anything's really that bad anymore. Yeah, and if it is, if people do consider it a coping mechanism, it's one of the most entertaining coping mechanisms there is. My therapist, and it makes money as well too. So, <laughs> yeah, right. So my therapist says it's a good way to view the world. That's Ooh. what she says. Uh, she says some of the stuff I do is unhealthy, but that's yeah? weirdly one of the. So things you she's you saying. go to therapy? Yeah, I go to therapy. When did you start doing that? Um, I've been to therapy a bunch over my life. I started when I was like 18. So I have, uh, I think this thing that runs in my family is like clinical depression. It's just like a chemical imbalance in your head. So like, you know. Some biology shit. It's yeah. not nature versus nurture. It's like chemical imbalance. Yeah, yeah. Like you it's said. just, yeah. I'm just, it's hard for me to feel any type of way. You know, like if I, it's, it, cause that's the thing is like a lot of people think depression is just like you're sad all the yeah. time. But sometimes depression is like, I don't feel happy or sad. I just don't feel like anything. No. And so, yeah, exactly. And so I started doing therapy when I was 18. I started trying to go on like medication that didn't work because it it numbs your brain. Like it makes you feel not there, not present. And so I've just kind of learned to live with it. And part of that is always making sure that you have somebody that's good to talk to to kind of process your own shit. And mm-hmm. so I restarted therapy in the summer of 2020, just like fucking everyone did. Uh, and I've been doing like Zoom, you know, Zoom yeah. calls every fucking Monday with my therapist. Uh, it's super helpful. I think everyone should do therapy. Really? Yeah. I also think that therapy should be a thing that the government fucking pays for. Really? Because it's, yeah, it's, it's a life-changing thing to have a person who's knowledgeable, hear you out and tell you, like, not only hold you accountable, like, hey, this is a thing that you did in that situation that maybe you didn't mean to do, but it's also not great. And also to kind of work through other stuff that, like, okay, maybe they meant that, but what if they just meant, like, you're cute and just fucking you take that compliment yeah. and you don't question it too yeah. much, you know, shit like that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because they, you know, they're backed by science and all yeah, this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I've, yeah, I'm sure it, yeah, I'm sure it helps a lot. So run me through the day you were 18 and you were like, well, I'm going to therapy. Like, was that fucking scary? Was you nervous? Were you thinking that people were going to shame you? No. Were you excited? I was excited to have somebody to talk to. Yeah. Uh, to, cause like, so I'm, I'm half white and half Mexican. I fucking knew it. <laughs> That's where I get the type from, bro. It's the Germans, bro. I'm cheating. I know. What are you? Are you full I, Mexican? No, I'm half Salvadorian, half Guatemalan. What? So two, yeah, two of the fucking smallest peoples in the That's Western Hemisphere. That's how you know hemisphere. you're fucking related to, like, royalty. Guatemalan <laughs> royalty. Well, my dad says that, like... Uh, People ask him all the time, like, people are very disrespectful to him saying, like, that's not your son because he's, like, this tall and very dark. And, like, now it doesn't bother him, but it used to fucking bother him. But now but he, now he's just like, oh, yeah, my mom's neighbor was tall. So maybe, like, that's why <laughs> everyone's just like, ah. My mom doesn't like that joke. But, fucking, yeah, so my mom gets fucking pissed when fucking he says that joke. My but. dad does. My dad's similar. He's, he's, like, he's, like, up to my shoulders. And he's, like, a oh, fucking big dude, right? Yeah. Uh, he, cause he's like Aztec Mexican, you know. Oh, what I mean? he's like one of them originals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's a beefy boy. Yeah, one of them pyramid Mexicans. <laughs> yeah. is, that, is that racist, <laughs> or is that just a cool thing to say? <laughs> I don't know. I, cause I just made it up right now. I don't want to get canceled if I get, if I get put on. Yeah, one hey, of them are, It's cool if I say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not Guatemalan <laughs> Salvadorian ass. You can't say that shit. I know, I know. My bad. So yeah, Sorry. he's a pyramid Mexican. Yeah, I said it. I made it up. Yeah, yeah, he's a. He's a. <laughs> 
But he he did the opposite where he would because I'm so tall. He likes to make this joke where he's like, I'm not that tall. He can't be my kid. <laughs> and he would always make that fucking joke that was like, uh, you know, they say uh, a pregnant or a, a paternity test is only like 99.9 percent oh. accurate. So <laughs> there's that 0.1 yeah, percent. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're a bad dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, funny. Yeah. But yeah, I, you know, I, I'm half white and half Mexican. So like the Mexican side of my family, very stereotypically, like therapy is stupid. Like it's white people shit. But the white side of my family, <laughs> Sorry. I ain't good. Mm-hmm. The white side of my family loves it. Like they're, you know, I a lot of my, I have a they're very supportive. Yeah, yeah. I, I had an aunt who suffered with uh, a, a clinical depression mostly her whole life, and unfortunately, you know, she committed suicide um, when I was like a baby yeah. too. So it's. It's a thing where, like, as soon as I was like, I want to go to therapy, my mom was like, oh, fuck, yeah, let's yeah. get, get, get uh, You're hello, like, I have, I have three numbers. Yeah, they were like, oh, wow, that's. Yeah, it, it's, it, everyone was so yeah. nice, so supportive, so okay. great. And, the you know, my therapist never makes, the nice thing about therapy is they never make you feel like you're crazy. And contrary to popular belief, I think this is why, personally, a lot of Mexican family doesn't like it. It's because the stigma around therapy Right, is that like, how did your parents fuck you up? Mm. And like, a Mexican family is like, what do you mean I fucked you up? I raised you the best that I could. They take it the wrong way. Yeah, like, oh, I didn't give you fucking everything that you needed. I worked so hard. So, like, my therapist is very clear from the get go where she's like, I'm, it's not your parents' fault. Sometimes it's just the way that you are. Sometimes it's just like the way that you process things. The other thing, too, is like, think about how no one taught you how to think. Like, you just develop that from being who you are. So yeah. everyone thinks differently. So sometimes you pick up a bad habit. Like, smoking. Same shit, right? I started smoking because I was like, I like it. It looks cool. Whatever. I was a fucking kid in high school. I started smoking. And then, flash forward, I'm, what, 21? I'm going through a pack of cigarettes a day. And I'm like, I don't even know why the fuck I smoke. Like, I hate the smell. Yeah. Uh, I'm addicted to it. That's the main reason I'm still smoking. But, like, if you ask me, why did I start this? And now I'm on the jewel because I have to be. And I'm trying to wean myself off. Wow. But if you had asked me, like, why did you start smoking? I can't give you a real answer. Really? Yeah. Do you remember the first day you did? No. Really? No, I've smoked so many So cigarettes. much, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I was with friends, and somebody's older brother had, like, a cigarette, and they were like, try it, and I hit it like a joint, because I smoked weed before I smoked cigarettes. Mm, yeah. And I tried it, and it, was, it just made me cough, but then everyone like, made me feel bad, and so then, like, I kept sm- trying to smoke it right. But then that's not, you know, you don't get addicted off of the one. And yeah. I did. there was a period of time where I did like it because it's like a fucking smokable Xanax. You know, mm. it just chills you out. Do you smoke? No, I don't. You I have asthma. You, you, you have asthma? I have asthma. So literally right now, I don't, like, don't want to disrupt the conversation because it's so good. Right now, when we laughed, I started wheezing. Right now, I'm wheezing. <laughs> it's, I'm, it's, I'm really, it's really hard for do me to breathe. Do you need an inhaler? I do, yeah. Can I hit it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, Dude, can, yeah, yeah hit that yeah, yeah, fucking shit. Can I, can I fucking hit this hit shit? Hit this shit, bro. Just fucking light this shit? <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know. Now, well, I'm, you know, I'm glad that you know it's so good for you because I, I know there is a stigma, and I know therapy. I know you probably faced yeah with therapy. I know you probably have you faced like any like crit- criticism, any shit talking from people. Most people in my life have been pretty supportive of the fact that I have to you know that you have to talk to people, and most people understand it. Um, I have like my dad's family. If I've ever revealed that I go to therapy, they'll like kind of clown on you for like, oh, this is some white people shit. And it's like, oh, well, I'm sorry, I don't fucking drink 32 beers in a day and fix a car and think that my <laughs> yeah. life is yeah. happy, yeah. Dad. Yeah. You fuck. You fucking you pyramid triangle <laughs> you pyramid 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 Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Oh yeah, but it's. I wish. I wish I had like a better answer. Like yeah, no one wanted me to get better, but not everyone's. Been- yeah, because I literally. Yeah, I, I, there's a stigma. There's a stigma on it, and I just. I was just watching. I watched Shutter Island the other night. Yeah. And like you, you watch it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The whole fuck. In ninety percent of the movie, you, you're like these therapists are gonna kill them, bro. They're the fucking worst. And then at the end, it turns out they're just like the nicest people possible. They just want the best for Leonardo DiCaprio. You know what I mean? And like. I don't know why I brought that up, but <laughs> it's just that movie really fucked me up. I've been thinking about it a lot, actually. I was gonna go to therapy, and yeah, then I saw yeah, that movie. And then I saw and I'm like, that shit. I was like, Ben Kingsley's not gonna take my mind away, bro. <laughs> but uh, but I yeah. mean, the thing to remember though is that's very important. Is like therapists are not like gods, right? They're still people, and people can be bad at their job. Yeah. Like remember when you were a kid, you go to elementary school, and your teacher comes in one day. 
and she's fucking wearing like a hat and it's down low and she's all fucking quiet and she's like, today we're going to watch a movie. And when you're a kid, you're like, oh, this is awesome. This and is the as best an adult, ever. you're like, oh, you're fucking you're hung over. over as a motherfucker. You were yeah. dying. Like I have a lot of friends that are teachers now and we used to party and they're like, oh, I have class tomorrow at six. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, dude. I did ecstasy with somebody one, like at this party, right? I'm fucking rolling on ecstasy and she was like, oh shit, do you know how to come down? And I was like, no, I don't think there is. And she was like, yeah, well. You know, I got school tomorrow, and I was like, oh, what are you taking? And she's like, no, I'm a fucking, I'm a teacher. And I was like, whoa, what? For what grade? For, it's your third grade, bro. Jesus Christ, yeah, bro. Third fucking grade. Wow. Yeah, so that that that's that's what fucked me you up. You hooked up with her, huh? No, no. No, <laughs> no, no, no. No? No, she was, that's the other thing is like, oh, this is another thing of comedy is like, because, you know, you start so young, most people in comedy are older than you. Yeah. So it was a party I was invited to by a friend I met in comedy who was like 35, married, two kids. Uh, so everyone at that party is also married. I love doing drugs with older people because really? they're so like, all right, we popped ecstasy, right? And then everyone was like, okay, so we have bags of vitamins here. And <laughs> oh, they're so Every respect- three yeah. hours, you guys should all take one because that way you won't really feel it in the morning. Yeah. So, like, the first time I ever did ecstasy, I didn't feel shit. Like, people were like, the come town's so bad. And I was like, nah, dog, I took vitamin C. Yeah. They gave me a fucking kale smoothie in the morning. I was good to go. I yeah, so like drinking with all the people, too, because, like, they're like, instead of, like, they're like, Instead of saying, oh, let's go get McDonald's after this. They're like, no, let's go back to my place. I'm going to cook something yeah. up and stuff like that. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness, dude. Yeah. Can, like, can you that's, guys adopt me? Like, that's fucking <laughs> sick, dude. That's what I do, man. I'll, I only, I mostly like party, party. I mostly like party or drink with, uh, <clears throat> with older people because they, you know, they do that shit. Or like somebody will be, I remember the, the time where I, where I realized the difference is I went out drinking twice in the same week. And the first week, it was with uh, my ex-girlfriend who, like I said, she went to USC. Yeah. She's a fucking, basically like a kid still, right? Like, we're both kids. Like, even though you're 21, you're still fucking stupid. Yeah. So, it was like a competition to see who could drink the most and then who could order the shittiest thing from, like you said, like McDonald's afterwards. And then we got back to the place and then we, like, keep drinking. And then, like, people are getting sick and I wake up in the morning and my fucking head hurts and I hate myself. And then, like, five days later, I'm drinking with my other friends and they're like... 40, right? And his wife, like you said, she's like a chef, so like she whipped up like a fucking spinach thing, like mm-hmm. salad, and she was like, yeah, it's gonna like soak up the toxins. Yeah, yeah, and like, say that shit, yeah. yeah soak, soak up, up the soak toxins. Up, yeah, yeah. And like every time I had a drink, somebody would come over and they'd be like, remember, for every drink you have, two glasses of water. <laughs> yes, dude. And you just drink two glasses. And you're like, oh my God, thank you so much for reminding me, Jerry. That's yeah. good. Yeah, or yeah. like you get too drunk and they're like, we have a guest bedroom. Oh, <laughs> you know? I, yes, bro. Yes, yes. Yeah. Are you going to be able to get home? We can get you an Uber home. We can, we can get, yeah, they're so. Like, well, I think, I think Melissa can drop you off. But yeah, you can, right? She's like, yeah, yeah. I just got to move the car seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, yes, dude, yes. <laughs> but dude, my guy, thanks so much for coming out. We're yeah, about to bro. transition over there. You ain't transition. leaving. You ain't leaving my fucking no. studio yet. I'm never going. I live here now. Gosh, please don't. The cameras are rolling, bro. (laughs) Bye, guy. You know, off air, we were talking about something that you've been kind of struggling with. I don't know if you're okay to talk about Mm -hmm. that. You say uh, you've been struggling with mortality. Yeah, fear of mortality has been fear like, of immortality. Immortality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm afraid, afraid to live forever? on the internet forever. <laughs> <laughs> immortality. No, you're afraid of mortality. You're yeah, afraid of, I, of death and dying. That's it's been like a constant fear, and uh, one of the things that I've had to explain to basically anyone that I talk to about it is it's it's very specifically like the fear of losing consciousness forever. You know, like that that thing where. You're alive right now, you, so you're processing stuff, you're, you're thinking about it, you're able to be and exist in the world, but like one day that will stop. And that thing terrifies me the most. That thing where like, I'm not gonna be here, I'm not gonna be able to talk to anybody, I'm not gonna know what happens. Um, I guess like the biggest way, or the easiest way to explain it is like, have you ever had like two friends hang out without you? And then somebody was like, oh yeah, fool, they were telling me this thing about you. Woo-hoo. It was wild. And then you're like, what the fuck did they say? Like, what what did they say about me? Yeah, so imagine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, my homie sucks. Yeah, it is your order. Bunch of fucking pyramid Mexicans. <laughs> 
Whoa! <laughs> Stacking up secrets. What? Mondo. Hey, you get me drunk, that's what happens. <laughs> I'm racist specifically towards the Aztec Mexicans. <laughs> He's like, we should, we should allow Mexicans to come in, but not Aztec mm-hmm. Mexicans. If you got a hand like a fucking burger patty, get the fuck out. You actually have bigger hands than me. I You're do. one of the few people that have bigger hands than me. I do. That's why I, I came into this room and I saw your rings and I was like, hey, where are you buy rings at, dog? Yeah, he was going to rob me. I was. I've said I'm going to rob Bro, you like five fucking, times. Dude, these fucking half Mexican, half whiteies are pissing me off. It's the that's the German side of me. I see somebody yeah, with dude. some nice shit, and I'm like, I want to take it. <laughs> I'll fucking take it. I'll put it. I'll give that it to the him. Oh, thank yeah, because you're. I'm taller than you. Okay, all right. Where's the camera? I can't. I can't do the show. I'm taller anymore. than him by what? Five, six inches. <laughs> okay. You know, by like an inch. But you have bigger feet than me. I'm size 14. You're size 15. Yep. And your hands are like a half inch bigger than mine. Just yeah, just the slightest amount. Yeah. It's it's weird. Do you like being bigger than people? I do. Yeah. 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 I think it's I think it's really cool. I'd rather be bigger than smaller than people. <laughs> that's that's fair. Yeah. I'm sorry to the small people, but I am very sorry to small people. Yeah, dude. This shit looks like it fucking sucks. I uh, <laughs> it's been really funny my whole life because like it's. As I'm sure you know, it helps with like dating and shit. Oh yeah, you like, like, like you don't have to be that handsome if you're no, tall. You that's can just it. be like average looking. I mean, you look like this. You, you look like this. By the way, you look very handsome. You have a very nice beard. Oh, thank you. I wish I could look at my bullshit. It looks nice, bro. Shut the fuck up. Stop. I know it doesn't look nice. You know it does look nice. Look, here's the thing. I can't grow a mustache right, and like this part doesn't connect. And, like, it's still, like, working out, you know? It's like a, this is like a, my beard's like a fat guy that's like, one day I'm going to be good. There's abs under here. Dude, dude. I always tell people once, once my shit connects, it's over It's over. <laughs> and I mean bitches, like, in, in a non-gender fluid term, like a non- I mean androgynous bitches. Yeah, like, like, both men, women, children. It's over for everybody, bro. <laughs> You can't look me in the eyes if once this shit connects. I'm an equal opportunity bitch caller. Yeah, 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 Everyone's yeah, yeah, a yeah, bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you can't even call my phone anymore, dude. I'm changing phone numbers once this shit connects. Right? Every month. <laughs> dude, yeah. we were talking about death. We were talking about death. We were. We were talking about death. Yeah, see, that's the thing. My brain instantly goes to, like, avoid shit. Uh, but you said you were saying it's, like, um, your two friends hanging out and, like, saying something. And then how, how, is, how, how, is that, how does that make you feel like uh, death? Um, so, okay. it's the, the, the way that I use that as, like, an example is, like, there's... So much that's going to happen and so much that does happen. And then, you know, the other thing that sucks is, like, eventually when you die, you've had people die, obviously, right? I mean, that sounds so insulting. I see the way you live. you had people yeah, yeah, yeah. I see the sadness in your eyes. You have lost some people. Yeah, I see the weight on your chest. You've lost some people. Okay. <laughs> you've you've you, eaten at some You didn't funerals. say this. You said this. It's no. not my chest. <laughs> I Go see ahead. the weight in your Go breast. Ahead. Keep fucking saying how death scares you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> You're like opening up. I'm like, Go ahead. Keep fucking saying whatever fucking shit. No. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Can't wait for you to die. <laughs> no, yeah, 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 it's yeah. that that I guess that's it's a bad example, but just that that feeling of like fear of missing out, right? But of everything, like I don't know how things are gonna end. I don't know. There's so much shit where like it's stupid to the point where like. It sucks that life is so finite, right? Like so, such a small blip in time that you, you, you're not, you, there's so much stuff you're never going to see through. Like the space race, right? Like everyone's fucking going to the fucking moon. They're trying to colonize Mars. In our lifetime, we're probably never going to see that come to fruition. But you know somebody will, right? So shit like that on a grand scheme. But then even smaller stuff where like if I have a child... I'm never going to be able to live through and see that child's entire lifetime or lifespan. And if I do, because they die, it then it's even worse. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that like that death thing is so, to me, one of the worst things that it, that, that happens. It, because it, it, it really limits the amount of stuff that you can do. Because you, you only have a finite amount yeah. of time, so you have to choose very carefully what things you want to do. Yeah, so that's what I was going to ask. Knowing that you have a finite amount of time and knowing, 
always having death in the back of your head. How does that dictate your decisions, your daily decisions, your monthly goals, your yearly goals, your your career for that matter? How does that, how does that, you know? I I do this thing all the time, and I've done it since high school, where I never take anything too seriously. And I always kind of go in half cocked, right? Like I have a general game plan for stuff, but I improvise a lot or I'll do something like weird uh, because I think like, oh, wouldn't that be so funny if I went in without any preparation? Um, And I've realized through doing therapy and through just kind of living and doing more things creatively that it's a, it's like a, a defense mechanism almost. Because that way, if I fail, I can tell people, like, well, I wasn't even trying 100%. Mm, Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I think about, like, dying and the fact that, like, if I don't give 100%, 100%, I don't want to, I don't like saying 110% because it's physically impossible. But you weigh 110% of a person, so it's okay. Excuse me? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yep. That's two strikes, Mondo. <laughs> two strikes. One Let's more, see. and then I'm fucking done. Yeah, one more. One more strike, and I'm gonna ask you politely to stop. What's worse is that I'm is that I'm bigger than you. Like I'm bigger, bigger what the than fuck? you. You're taller than Bro. me. I'm wider than you, dude. Yeah. You're so <laughs> handsome. You're so fucking attractive, dude. What? I love you, Mondo. <sighs> I knew you were going to be a good guest, bro. I knew it, bro. I knew I'm it. I'm not even good. I just call him handsome. De- best guest I've had so far. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's that thing where if I'm not trying to yeah. the full extent of my ability, then forever. Now, do you want to keep doing that? Or do, or do you view like going in half cocked and being like, you know, not taking it too seriously that way? If it doesn't happen, then that's fine. Do you view that as a negative thing or a positive thing? It's both. So the positive of it is I never have a game plan for anything like long term, right? Yeah. Which means that if I have a plan to do something and it doesn't go exactly the way I want it to go, I don't get mad because I just take it. I go, this is the way something is now. And then I move forward with, you know, making whatever changes are necessary to make. Mm-hmm. But it's bad in that if I'm not truly trying my hardest to do anything, then no one's ever going to see it as like, no one's ever going to see what I think could happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you're not really actually trying, then you're not actually living your shit. So it's it's good in that the mentality can allow you to be more flexible and you never get too hung up on anything. Because that's mm-hmm. another thing too, is some people get so caught up of like, <laughs> it's like Craigslist misconnections, right? Like people romanticize what could have been yeah. and they like pine over this world that like they think they could have had instead of focusing on like what the world is now and moving forward. So that's one positive is like I don't give a shit about the past. The past is done. It's gone. I can't change it. All I can do is learn from it and move forward. But in terms of like trying my hardest now especially since this thing has happened, especially since like the big fear has happened because I've always feared it a little bit. But I came, you know, face to face with it in 2020 when everyone did. When everyone was constantly seeing, like, death is around every fucking corner. You can't even hang out with your friends. You're isolated. All that life really is is who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also went through a breakup. So, like, now I live alone after living with another person for, like, three years. So, you know, when you're truly, honestly alone, you can't lie to anyone. You can't fill your life up with stupid bullshit you can't be out doing comedy every day or working all the time like you're just forced to be alone and i've realized that like i don't pursue things because i think like they won't happen or i go in half cocked because i'm like well that way if i fail like i said then no one's gonna be like oh of course he failed he didn't have a plan but now i'm holding myself accountable which is i think a better way to be yeah. Because then you take the failure in stride and then you can say, even if I failed, at least I did fucking everything that I could. Well, it's crazy that you say that, dude, because literally <clears throat> the other night I was scrolling through Instagram and an ad for uh, this guy's agency where he takes like headshots for you and he helps you practice lines and stuff like that. It's like an actor's, you know, one stop shop. He made an advertisement about the re- he's like, the reason why you're not getting this part is because you're not trying. It's like. You're not, it's not that you're not trying hard enough. You're not putting, you're not like putting out the effort that you think you are. Like, like, and then he said, like, you guys are going half cocked. You guys are like, do like half assing it because 
the thought of memorizing all the lines, paying money out of your own pocket for an acting coach, you know, paying out of pocket for your own headshots, and doing all these things and, and becoming that that character just for one audition and then not getting it terrifies you. So the the thought of putting giving it your all and not getting it terrifies people. Yeah, you know, well, and that's, it, it's terrifying. That's exactly what I mean. It's terrifying. Cause... It was even with love as well. Like the, the the thought of like putting yourself out there and being like, baby, baby boy, baby girl, I love you. Like I want to be with you. Like. I've never felt like this with anyone, and then have getting rejected. Oh my gosh! It's the Horrible worst feeling. feeling. So that's what people are like. I'll wait two hours before I text them back, even though they really like them. Or I'll call them back in two days. Or, you know, maybe I don't want to hang out this Friday. You know what I mean? Like they start like putting up these walls and shit. Like it's. it's but what is the key? I think it's just. It could be courage. It could be. Like, what do you think the key would be to break that cycle? I think the key to doing it and what I've been trying to do most is to what I call closing the gap. Where, like, I realized one of the things that makes me so afraid of death is that one day I'm going to die and no one truly, like, knew me. You know what I mean? So, like, what I've done is... All right, great way to explain it. Do you ever feel like you're with your friends and you're one way... And then you're with somebody else and you're another way. And then when you come home and there's no one else around you, there's no one to be like, you know, like turned on for. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like you're not playing a character. You're Melvin or like I'm Armando when I'm alone. That person is different. And I realize that like that guy has hopes and dreams. That guy has ideas, thoughts, whatever that don't get conveyed in other areas. And so what I'm trying to do is close that gap so that there's one version of me. So, like, opening myself up has been a key component of that. And, like, to use the example you said, like, yeah, if you want to text somebody back immediately after getting their text message, fucking do it. Because if you're going to, if the person you be with, sounds so, if the person you be with be like... (laughs) If you when they be <laughs> like, yeah. women be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. no. But if you if you're worried, if you're with somebody and they think that you're like, I don't know, playing these like games, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that in any professional friendship, romantic, any kind of relationship. Yeah, because life is I, already tough enough, bro. Yeah. Like, just fucking say what you want, say what you mean. Yeah, and that's that's the biggest thing is open honesty. Yeah. Like, I hate. I hate anything that's just like, I hate subtext in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that being said, man, uh, I want to ask you about some things, but if you don't want to talk about it, that's totally fine. We can take it out of the pot. We can take it out of the podcast. Yeah, you fucking lit as shit right now, dude. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Nah, dude, I'll tell you what happened. Bring over the fucking maker's mark, bro. I'm I'm trying to get you. (laughs) Are you? (laughs) Yeah, when I was looking you up, and obviously we have like mutual friends. They were telling me that you're partnered with uh, Rooster Teeth. I am, yeah. Yeah, and um, first of all, how is that? And second of all, like, how have you been navigating all of, like the negative things of, that have been like been going on with them? Um, I love Rooster Teeth as a company. So, do you want to tell people what Rooster Teeth is? Yeah, Rooster Teeth is uh, a company that I have to switch to. No, work. yeah, go ahead, please, please. <laughs> no, please. no, this is the corporate side of the. <laughs> Oh, yeah, when I'm talking about Rooster Teeth. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rooster Teeth is like, um, I don't even know how to describe it anymore. It's a media conglomerate that focuses on making content based around the idea of video games. What I am familiar with and what most people are familiar with is they made a show called Red vs. Blue when I was in like middle school and elementary school even. And what it was was they took footage from Halo and they turned it into like a show. And that kind of encapsulates everything that they're about, which is like taking video games, but then creating worlds and content within them that aren't just like, they don't just play video games. I mean, for sure they do. That's part of what they Mm -hmm. do. But it's using the video games as 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 a bouncing off point to get into um, doing more stuff. And so now they are this network that's like even owned by fucking Warner Brothers or some shit. Uh, that's the burp. Yeah. Warner Brothers is gonna love that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, 
No, they're, 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 they're this company that makes all this stuff. So, like, recently, what people might be more familiar with is, like, Netflix had Transformers, mm-hmm. uh, that TV show. They, Rooster Teeth, the, their animation studio is the one who made that. Oh, wow. Um, and now they have, like, their own anime called Ruby, W or R-W-B-Y. They have all these other shows that exist independent of video games that are just like yeah. things that they make. In fact, my uh, uh, my ex and current podcast host, Andrea, she did a uh, uh, a voice acting gig for a cartoon that they did that was just like, it has nothing to do with video games at all. It was a cartoon that started as a webcomic and then it became popular. It won like some contest. They animated it, made a full pilot and she's like a voice in that. So mm-hmm. it has nothing to do with video games at all. Um, they just make content is the easiest way to describe yeah. it. They've had a lot of different, uh, I would say, scandals or, or negative things that have happened over the years that are, I think one thing that they would really love it if I pointed out is it's always individuals, you know? It's never them as a company as yeah. a whole. It's, it's always just, so-and-so from Rooster Teeth. It's never Rooster Teeth fucking Yeah. Like and they're very willing to, one of the things that I've always noticed, and one of the things that, that, that sticks out to me and might also stick out to you, is every time as a comic that looks like the way that I look, uh, when I get an opportunity, like the first time I got to go to Sketchfest, the Sanford, or SF Sketchfest, yeah. which don't get me wrong, super excited. Yeah. They also put me on a bunch of other shows. It was a great time. But the first show that they put me on was this show called Donde Esta Mi Comedy. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Is that what you see me? You see me as like a Latino comedian? Because I'm not. I'm just a comedian that is brown. I don't talk about being Latino. And if I do, it's like, isn't it weird that technically this qualifies? So Rooster Teeth has never made me feel like they were bringing me on because I'm brown. They never tout me as like, look, we have, look, we got one. We caught one in the wild. And now we're putting it on display for you. So... They've been really good to us. They've been really nice. They've been very. Um, so yeah, explain like your partnership. Like what 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 exactly does that entail? So I run a podcast called Cult Podcast where yeah, we cover cults. Which is fucking crazy successful. Uh, it's it's been doing a lot better than I thought it was, and uh, it's been nice. It's a thing that I really really love doing. Yeah. Um, and I do it with my two best friends. I do it with Andre Gazetta and, mm-hmm. and Paige Wesley, and they. Rooster Teeth came on as a person that was going to initially kind of um, do advertisements for us. Like they would find advertisers, bring it to us, and then kind of like help us facilitate that. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of been that for a while, and then we've been working with them more, and they just like working with us. And so they've been finding ways to kind of implement us into their normal programming where like me personally, I do streaming with them a lot. Yeah. Like I'll play Among Us or uh, I was supposed to play Phantasm and then it got switched back to Among Us. Um, there's a video coming out with uh, these people uh, from Funhouse, which is like a, a section of Rooster Teeth. Uh-huh. Um, and then, yeah, the, Andrea did the, the, the cartoon with them. Oh, wow. Um yeah. So yeah, it's it's okay. I used to watch uh Red vs. Blue when I was a kid. Same here. Because I was never into gaming. Because my parents didn't let me. I was into like sports or whatever. It was stupid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a fucking cop out. You're wearing a fucking jersey right now. Yeah, okay, and I just get really mean. <laughs> I don't even like sports. <laughs> uh what you call them? Um, but yeah, I remember watching Red vs. Blue and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, how do they make this? Like, it's so fucking funny. And, like, the fact that they just made a fucking plain-faced Halo character. What's his name? Uh, Master Chief. Master Chief, like, like a Master Chief, like, helmet just so hilarious. Even back then as a kid, I was like, wow, this is special. And they they made a live action a couple years ago, right? I don't know if they did. I'm not <laughs> I'm not as knowledgeable as people uh, should be if okay. they work there. We'll cut that out. But they're <laughs> thank you. <laughs> they are I know that they are currently making uh new episodes of it that are like really well produced and even kind of like animated outside of the tradition. Cuz back yeah. in the day, remember, they used to just screen it's record. Genius. That's yeah. a genius idea. That's like having your own animation studio, but you, what a genius idea. That's so underrated. 
Yeah, let's do it right now. Animate this whole video. Of yeah, us yeah, just yeah. Playing I'll, be, like, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be the alien. You'll be Master Chief. <laughs> no, I was thinking, no, that's played oh, like out. Grand Theft Auto. We gotta do it in like NBA 2K. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll be like Shaq, yeah, and yeah. you'll be like Yao Ming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then oh, we'll yeah, just yeah, fucking yeah. animate them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah, I want to, I want to get into your fucking, into your really successful podcast. Dude. What is it called? <laughs> It's called Cult Podcast. It's called the really successful what's Cult your, uh, Podcast. What's your podcast about cults called? It's called <laughs> Cult Podcast, and it's super successful. Yes. So you have a fucking podcast yeah. just about cults mm-hmm. uh, around the world or just America? Everywhere. So we cover a lot of these groups that um, we have like these kind of, I don't know how you would describe it. We have like criteria that we kind of think would uh, uh, would cover what a group that we would cover. That's the easiest way to say it. Okay. We have a set of criteria that defines what we would call a cult. Because legally speaking... That you made yourself with your partner? Actually, that our lawyer helped us make. You have a fucking lawyer? We do have a lawyer, yeah. We because we got we got attempted to be sued once. If really? Sense. Yeah, we've already been we've already had like legal Ooh. action. I can't. I legally cannot. Dude, say. we need a lawyer. <laughs> you need a lawyer. Yeah, I need a lawyer because I'd be saying some fuck shit over yeah, here. Yeah, bro, I'd be taking my pants yeah, off for yeah. podcasts. And I'd be, I was videotaping you too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I got tagged in three stories already. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like moving your jacket. I was just like. Like Look at more of it, yeah. yeah. I gotta show more ass. You do. I do. Do you have a nice ass? I have a no. I have a juicy ass. Because I can't see because of the jacket. Because of the jacket. Want to show us? Yeah. Okay. You just lift your jacket up. You just lift to. the jacket. Yeah. Oh my god. No, uh, lift the jacket up. It is a nice ass. <laughs> it's a nice ass, dude. Because I have some friends that have asses, but they're like concave. <laughs> what did you just say? I said, don't you fucking forget it. <laughs> don't you dare! Look, look at his ass. That's a nice. Uh, well, no, that goes in. Where does it go? <laughs> Where does it go? Like you would think that he has a nice. Like, you have like a paradox ass. Like it shouldn't exist. <laughs> it's a black. <laughs> it's a paradox. <laughs> bro, your ass is a paradox. Your ass, bro. Your ass, ass trying to divide by zero, bro. Oh it's my the- gosh, dude! Your ass is not divisible by any number, dog. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Here, come on camera and show the people. What? Yeah? You see that shit? You see it? Bro. Well, I mean, there's nothing there. So you fucking have this fucking podcast. What do you... Do you have a favorite cult? I have a few different ones that I covered. Um, so the point I was trying to make earlier with, like, the fact that we have criteria made by a lawyer means that we cover groups that you wouldn't necessarily think of as, like, a cult. Like, obviously, we've covered Heaven's Gate... We've covered... Um, the basics. Yeah, 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 yeah. And actually, weirdly enough, some of the cults we haven't covered. Like, we haven't done Jonestown yet. Um, we haven't done some of the, the more famous ones because we're just like, you know, we're saving them. So we could, we could get yeah, them later. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite cults that I've ever covered was uh, the Latin Kings, which is... Uh, exactly. It's not something that... And we've covered, like, the Crips and the Bloods before... Oh, you um, consider those cults as well? Oh, we do. We oh, totally okay. do. I mean, they, they so fit. So gangs, you consider gangs cults? I consider gangs cults in that, like, you... The thing about cults is that not you're not... There's a misconception where, like, okay, one, there's a misconception that, like, only stupid people join cults. Everyone can fall into a cult-like mentality. Secondly, um, there's this, this, this idea that, like, you choose to join a cult. But so many people are, like, born into either a, a group of people like there were children at Jonestown yeah. you know just like there's children like you can be born in this area you in can, yeah yeah you can be born a Christian anything yeah. but you can be born in one particular place in South Central LA and because of where you're born you're born into this gang like because otherwise you have no protection yeah. yeah so it's this kind of mentality that that breeds that and what's so interesting about the Latin Kings particularly is that they uh, they incorporate a lot of Catholicism into it mm. because when you break down the history of these groups, which is something that we do because context is so important, is uh, this group originated in Chicago, and when Latinos started going to Chicago, particularly like Puerto Rican people started going yeah. to Chicago, they weren't allowed to start their own church. the The people who like dictate what churches are and aren't allowed, they were like, "We don't, you can't do that." 
So you have to go to an existing church. But back in the day, they had color lines, which means that if you're brown, you can't go to a white neighborhood. So they couldn't even go to where the churches were. So I, I don't have to explain to you how important Jesus is, is to, to brown people. people yeah. So they basically did this thing where... Uh, Jesus piece right here, baby. Exactly. Are you religious? I, I am, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But what are I, you? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you said fuck like 30 times. I'm a human being. Bro. You can say fuck and, yeah. and believe in Jesus. No, I, I. You think Jesus never said fuck? <laughs> you think Jesus was getting murdered on the cross and he was like, fuck! <laughs> ah! I was like, fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I do believe in God. I'm very. I've. This one's for Jesus. He's like, fuck! <laughs> bro, can you guys just fucking chill? And then they stabbed him. <laughs> ah! Fuck! <laughs> God damn it! I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dad. Dad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This, just, this shit hurts. No, I, I do believe in God, and I, I pray all the time, but uh, I don't go to church. I, uh, like you say, like you said before at the bar, like, you say therapists are people too. They're flawed just as well. Like, yeah. a priest is a person. I might, we might have to cut this shit out, but I believe he's just a man. He's just a regular man. He is. You know what I mean? And Everybody the, is. And I always say that Christians and like really religious people are some of the best people I've ever met and some of the worst people I've ever met. There's like, like no in between. Like, I think personally, and this is what, something that we're talking about a little bit off air, is that with me, uh, I am not religious, but I'm very spiritual, meaning that like I think God is everything. You know, like everything is God in, in the terms of, uh, it sounds woo-woo bullshit, you know, but like... If you break it down, everything comes from somewhere, right? Like you, me, Joel, Gerardo, we're all descendants of something, either through like ancestral shit, where like your parents lived through some shit and then they gave, yeah. they came from your grandparents yeah. and so on and so forth. But also like atomically speaking, we're all just the particles that are like stardust. Like yeah. we used to be stars yeah. and now we're here. Now we're here, yeah. And then we're gonna go back to being. To being stars. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So like that, process of creation to me is God. Like, that is what my God is. Well, yeah, well, that being said, these people had that same mentality as well. Like, yeah. Like, we need this in our lives. You need God in your life. Yeah. You need that. Because, I mean, it's so important to have, uh, especially when you're Latino, especially when you believe in the rigid rules of what, you know, maybe not you and I believe, but in the rigid rules of, like, Catholicism, where like if you don't do certain things, you won't go to heaven. They needed God so desperately that they couldn't go anywhere, they couldn't do anything. So what they started doing was these clubs slash gangs in the neighborhood started hosting churches basically illegally, like bootleg Jesus, yeah. like a, a church that wasn't sanctioned. And so when that's your only option for studying religion or for being religious, that is kind of an issue. So, like, imagine that. Imagine, like, how do I say it? Like, imagine if all of a sudden they told your grandparents they couldn't go to church anymore. And I'm assuming your grandparents go to church. I don't have grandparents. Fuck. Yeah. But, like, a, like a family member that's old. Yeah. Imagine you have a family member that's very religious, and all of a sudden they tell them that they can't go to church anymore. And then in their neighborhood, the only people that are running church are like MS-13 or something, you know? Yeah. So like you're going to go, you're going to be hesitant, but you're still going to go because that's the only option that you have. Yeah. So that ability to worship and then this gang become kind of intertwined and they change the landscape of Chicago in that time period forever. So there's all of these groups that are so interesting when you break them down. It's like, well, of course this arised because they all they wanted was to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> at the end of the day, the, the problem was just racism. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a lot of, like, Jonestown was the same shit, where a lot of people, everyone knows the story of Jim Jones in Jonestown, where, like, they went to Guyana and they fucking drank the Kool-Aid, which was technically Flavor-Aid, you know, whatever. But what a lot of people don't know is that the way that Jim Jones got his start was he was this white guy that would go to black neighborhoods and he would just be like, hey, everything fucking sucks here. And it shouldn't be this way. And all I want to do is, like, fix it. 
So what he would do was he would go and be a white guy and advocate for black people, and that's how he got his following. Like, that's exactly how he became what he was, was just because he was the only person standing up for them in a time when no one even regarded them as human beings. So a lot of it does come down to, like, racism or the context of people that aren't white in America yeah. or, like, the other. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah, you would say that's kind of, like, the <clears throat> the cult that stuck out to you most? Was the Latin Kings, yeah. The them, Kings, yeah. um... Probably the Chicago Rippers, also weirdly to stay in Chicago, was just this group of people that uh, were like weird Satanist-ish cannibals that did all this crazy oh, shit. shit. Where like, when we researched them, we were thinking of starting a different series, and so when we actually uh, did the research, we went to Chicago, and we like talked really? to, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you guys were in it, in it. Yeah, we like talked to prosecutors, we like, wow. I got, <laughs> I got <laughs> blocked by the person that, uh, yeah, we do this shit all the time. I got blocked by the person that prosecuted John Wayne Gacy because I made a bunch blocked of on jokes. Instagram? No, <laughs> like his phone number. Yeah. Like yeah. he blocked me on his cell phone and then he told his assistant never to pick up my calls again. Why, what jokes were you fucking making? Dog? I asked him who would win in a fight, uh, Pogo the Clown or Bozo the Clown. Uh, Pogo the Clown is John Wayne Gacy's alter ego yeah. when he was a clown and Bozo the Clown was just some clown. And uh, he didn't like that joke. What did he tell you? Was he just like... He got very serious and he was like, are you making light of the murders that happened? And I was like... No. No. Yeah. Fuck, <laughs> dude, that's crazy. Yeah, and then he, he was like, I think it would be better if we cut this off. And I was like, uh -huh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, because there's nothing you can say. I also like... We do shit like that all the time where like I technically joined the Ku Klux Klan when we researched the Klan. What the fuck? As like a joke. I thought it would be funny if Wait, I you're in it, it technically? Yeah. All I right, got cut a the cameras, bro. <laughs> nah. We don't you're interviewing a yeah, Klan yeah, member dude, right that's now. crazy. How? Wait, what? I used uh, fake information. Technically, I committed fraud, I guess. But like I used fake information and applied for the Ku Klux Klan under like some random name. And I like even paid dues. And I paid extra to get like a card sent to my house. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, I do shit like that all the time on it's the podcast. Fun, it's fucking fun, Well, because, yeah, it's just like you throw You were like, oh, on the podcast? No, I haven't done that on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that was separate. That was years ago. Wow. <laughs> I just did it for fun. Yeah. For funsies. Yeah. Yeah, I was just bored one day, dude. Yeah. I was thinking about the Pyramid Mexicans, and yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. That German was coming out of you real bad. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Dude, I want to know, like, obviously, you're just engulfed in that. Have Has a cult ever come up where you're researching them, and you go, oh, my God. If I was in that time period, or if I was in that group, I would be in that cult. There's... It's a difficult question. There's some cults that you hear and like, okay, for example, like I've already talked about in Jim Jones, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of his members were either citizens that were black and like, and I mean, they were really being mistreated. Disenfranchised. Yeah, but to the yeah. point where like, they all they wanted was they were like, we want energy, like power, like electricity. And the, the line is broken and they won't fix it for us. So Jim Jones, all he did was he was a white guy and he called the place and he talked to the people and he got it fixed. That's all he did. That's all he had to do to be regarded as like a fucking savior. So like in that context with who I am, I probably would have been a part of that movement of trying to like help people who felt disenfranchised or unavailable to like do shit because that's what I do now. Yeah. You know, that's all that I want to do is like help anybody that feels like they don't have yeah. the opportunities that they have or that other people have and so shit like that is stuff that sticks out to me but then there's also cults that are like kind of fun like low-key there's a group in san diego called unarius and all they do is they drive like basically lowrider cars spray painted with like ufos on them and they like believe that Star Wars was real, and it's like, yeah, I want to fucking live yeah, in that, that world. Am I? I think I'm in Uranus, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? 
<laughs> yeah, where it's just like, bro, they say shit like that, and you're just like, uh, yeah, bro, let's go. That's Luke awesome, yeah. Skywalker was my dad. Dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. That's crazy. I want to know, like, because obviously, you know, it, we joke, but it, it is successful. I, you know, it does have a really good following. What, what's the what's the Instagram handle? It's uh, at Colt Podcast. C U L T P O D C A S T. Yeah. I want to know if you have any crazy audience stories. Like, has anyone reached out saying, like, Oh my God, this helped me, or I can't get out of this call. Can you guys help me? We have a lot of people that follow us that are, uh, you know, former cult members. Um, wow. Because one of the things that we do is that we don't ever judge. Yeah, well, because that's the thing is like people have this idea of cult members as like, oh, they're stupid. Yeah. Or like, oh, I would never fall for that. But yeah. like I said, everyone falls for it. Everyone falls for some form of this like same mentality. Um, whether it's even like the easiest way to explain it to people who might not have that much experience with it is um, like your family, right? Especially like Latinos, we have this idea that like, well, family is everything. But I'm, if you're like me, then you have like an uncle who's like a total piece of shit. And everyone gives him a pass because like, oh, he's family and family is everything. But that's that same mentality. Like you're looking over, glancing over these negative side effects because you've been taught and indoctrinated in this belief that family is more important than anything else, than logic, reason, or your own yeah. faculties yeah. to like make your own decisions. So we don't make fun of cults ever, or, or the people who join cults because of, uh, I'm looking for a thing yeah, right no, now. But we, um, we never make fun of people who join cults because, I mean, everyone can. Everyone can fall into that shit, and you never want to, you never want to make somebody feel bad for being in that. Because that's another thing too: is if you tell people like, "Oh, you're stupid," they're never going to want to get out of it. Yeah. So we have a lot of former cult members who listen to the show. Um, we have people that have family and cults that will listen to the yeah. show. Wow. Um, and then we have just the general true crime audience. One of my favorite interactions from a fan ever, though is uh, about a week ago, we recorded an episode where at the very beginning we were talking about smoking weed. And you know those people who like have never smoked weed in their whole life, but they lie about it. And they're like, oh, oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah, yeah. One time I smoked weed and like we took like the weed and we put it on like a spoon and we heated it up and like then with we the, like injected the, it with the, the wall bomb. started melting? Yeah, 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 yeah like yeah, yeah. people will like lie about it. And I was talking about how I hate those people and then one of my co-hosts was like, yeah, weed is, you know, not all of us did weed. And I was like, weed is stupid. You just smoke weed and then you eat food and then you think about movies that are bad being good. And it was like a joke because obviously, like, I smoke a ton of weed, mm -hmm. right? But we had a new listener who only listened to the part where I said that weed is stupid. And they sent us a whole email. And uh, the email goes like this. <clears throat> Michael Phelps smokes weed and has won the Olympics. I could go on for literal days about the, the about of the influential and incredible people who have and do currently smoke weed, but I really shouldn't have to. Educate yourself. And I say that because I put educate period yourself. Oh period. My gosh. Educate yourself. You all have no damn idea what the fuck you're talking about and by saying literally anything about weed you have made yourselves look that much less intelligent i refuse to ever listen to more content from you guys because clearly you have no problem pushing your own judgmental and objectively wrong opinions on people wow you can tell Someone that he loves in his life hates that he smokes weed. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. somebody who's yeah, like he's taking like it out on you. <laughs> yeah. Someone that he respects hates that he smokes weed, he's taking it out on you. Yeah. Or she is, or whoever. It was a he, yeah, for yeah. sure. You got he, it right. Yeah, <laughs> that's they, that's they, dude they're energy. It out on you, dude. That's yeah. dude energy for sure. Yeah, oh hell yeah, dude. That's yeah. like man, why well, how people you know, boils down to people like their past traumas and their past, you know, everyone has like a little story, but it becomes a problem when it starts on some bullshit like that. It starts affecting other people around them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. 
we get like like you said though we get a majority of people who are like yo life is hard thank you for making levity yeah. possible um, or thank you of, for you know you obviously give out information as well you guys yeah. are very inf- you know all that yeah it's a very informative show and one of the things that uh, like I said context is one of the most important things. So, like, we always provide, like, well, of course, this makes sense in this time period. Like, um, when we cover spiritualism, like, the idea that, like, there's a spirit world and you can contact that. Like, Ouija boards, like, where Ouija boards come from. Uh, It sounds so wild now, but remember at the time that where spiritualism came from, the Civil War just happened. So, like, a huge portion of the country fucking died for no reason at all and people were trying to come to terms with that so like and then on top of that shit happening like the average life expectancy was like 50 if you were pregnant either you or your child would probably die in childbirth so like yeah exactly so like shit like that where context is so important and a lot of people don't look at it they just look at like oh isn't it crazy that like yeah, heaven's yeah. gate wore nikes they look at the surface but they don't see what like the, what led up to that yeah the shitty things that these people had to go through these you know all that stuff yeah and it's, it's awesome that you're like providing not only information but understanding that's really cool well, thank you that's like a whole new level of respect for the podcast because when i first heard about it i was like that's so sick i love podcasts <laughs> but you know that the more that you talk about it it's just like wow it's like really awesome i I 100%, I did know before, but now even more, why people love it and why you have a really, like, not say, not to say a cult following. But we do. <laughs> we yeah. literally you have, guys do. You guys do. We have, like, uh, uh, prayer candles of uh, each of the hosts, and they, like, yeah, You guys like, made or someone made for you guys? No, yeah, we make all our own merchandise. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah. so fucking cool. Because, you know, I make, like, yeah. clothing and shit, so like, yeah. we do everything. It's a cool, se- it's a great segue. So, where can they see that podcast? Uh, you can find us anywhere. Uh, the place that I would listen to it, if I was in a perfect world where I could tell you to listen to it, go to roosterteeth.com or download the Rooster Teeth app. You can get that fucking on your Xbox, on your Roku, your Amazon Fire Stick. Yeah. You can get it fucking Are you guys anywhere. on like Spotify or Apple? We are. We are on oh, everything. Spotify, yeah. oh, Apple iTunes, uh, Podbean. YouTube? Everywhere. Yeah, well, YouTube's the one we're not. That we need to get on. Okay. Everyone keeps telling us we got to get on it. I got bad advice when I started the podcast or when we started uh, uploading the podcast and I uh, fucked up. Dude, I'm with you, bro. So many people these past years are like, don't do YouTube. Don't do YouTube. And then I see people like that are not as like great, like cool or funny as me blow (laughs) up and get like become millionaires. And I'm just like. You should have done YouTube, bro. Fuck! I love that. That yeah. mentality. I see people that are so much less funny or talented than me. Melvin. I <laughs> get a little dash. Melvin. Melvin. I'm just going to get that quote. And I'm just going to like take a photo of it like this. I see people that are less talented, <laughs> funny than me, become millionaires, dog. Melvin. But <laughs> that being said, bro, you have your own clothing line? I do, yeah. Tell me a little about it. Uh, It's called Mad Local. The entire idea behind it is that all of the clothing is manufactured, hand-dyed, and printed in Los Angeles, California. Uh, It's sustainable, and one of the biggest things that we focus on is paying everyone in the process a fair and living wage. So when these clothing, when this clothing was made, it was all made by people who are being paid either minimum wage or above minimum wage. Yeah, we're actually down the street from the fashion district. So I, I know very well some of these people are getting taken advantage of. Yeah. yeah. Or there's so many people who make stuff like... Because you could just make shit in China. You can go through Alibaba and just make shit in China. <laughs> yeah. I've burped so many times yeah. in this Don't podcast. burp before you say China because we have a lot of supporters in China. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I want to have a lot of supporters in China. I think the problem with... China. <laughs> China is that China <laughs> oh my god just doesn't have the same kind of that time I thought China I was gonna throw off. <laughs> that was the same kind of China China yeah. they don't have the same kind of China no we uh, yeah we, do you want to show the shirts we do the sure yeah. yeah they're really fucking cool dude oh thank you oops so this is one that we did this was our winter collection uh, back when during the winter there was a lot of you know protests and shit happening for the mistreatment of uh, black Americans and black people in general um, by the police. And so we started making these shirts that were 
One of the other things that we do is we donate 10% of the profits that we make to different charities each mm -hmm. time we have a drop. And these ones were donated to uh, Black Lives Matter LA, which is the original Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah. Um, and the entire concept behind it was just kind of creating a brand that helps our community as much as possible sure. while emphasizing sustainability. So all of these shirts are 100% recycled cotton which means that they feel kind of vintagey because yeah. they technically are. Yeah. Uh, but they're made by workers in Los Angeles who are paid a fair and living wage. They're 100% uh, recycled. Uh, I just started working with this company called Amber Cycle, and they are, their whole thing is they take garbage and trash and they turn it into polyester and nylon to be made into clothing. They're based here in Los Angeles too. And so hopefully for the next few drops, we're going to have stuff that isn't just like t-shirts or sweatshirts. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. So, so fucking hungry. <laughs> I'm so fucking hungry. I'm so drunk. I'm so hungry. What do you want to talk about? Clothes? I'm so drunk. I'm so hungry. <laughs> it's been a fantastic ride. Yeah. Mondo. Mondo. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, man, if you ever want to use this spot to, for like a little pop-up shop, yeah. You're, I'd love you're to. Yeah. I have a lot of, uh, there's a lot of people that do pop-up, or not necessarily pop-up shops, but concept shops in Los Angeles. Two of my favorite are Braindead, which is my favorite brand. In mm -hmm. fact, when I brought you these fucking shirts, I fucking brought it in a Braindead uh, tote bag. Dang, that looks sick. Braindead is one of my favorite brands. Uh, they're doing a lot more size inclusive shit where like finally I can wear 2X in their shit and it yeah. fits because I'm so You're tall. You're 2X? I'm 2X, Me yeah. too. Well, two, well, here's the thing. I'm extra large through 3XL depending on how you size your clothing. Yeah. yeah. It's confusing as shit. It's, and it's dumb as shit. I hate mm -hmm. it. it it's because of my, being tall. Yeah, it makes me want to hate my body. It does. Yeah. And that's the and thing. that sounds like a joke when I'm being serious. I'm being very serious. Yeah, yeah. Melvin's the only other person that's understood what I mean. I get you, bro. Because it's not about being fat. It's about being tall. It's about being tall. So when it fits really nice, yeah. but then it just, it fucking it's like hits above your, your belly stomach. button yeah. and stuff. But then, but then when it's nice and long, it's super tight here and you're just like, what the fuck? It's yeah. like a cylinder tube. Yeah. And then that's why like, when you find the perfect shirt, it's just. I'll give you all of my recommendations for shirts. Braindead is fucking great. Uh, my second favorite shirt, or my second favorite company, and I think you in particular would love them, is called Apartment 4B. 4B in, uh, they're on Fairfax, they're, but they're from New York. It's run by this guy named Moon. And all of their clothing is so fucking nice. They go all the way up to 3XL, and really? the 3XL T is both tall and big. Wow, it's yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. But their shops are conceptual, really cool. They put a lot of forethought into like the ideas that they put so, forth. Yeah. So I'd love to do that, especially with the spring collection that we're yeah. coming out with. Absolutely, dude. Oh, yeah. Well, Mondo, be, honestly, bro, it was so great having you. This has been a fucking delight. Yeah. I, I hope I hope we're like fucking good friends now, dude. We're best friends now. Yeah. Besties. That's a, yeah, and I, the thing is, is like you had to get me drunk to do it. First of all, don't say that because I'll get me too All yeah. right. Are you, don't drink some more. Oh my God. Mondo. Oh my God. I have it all over my face. You do, and your shirt. And my shirt? And your chain, yeah. Oh, fuck. And your beard. I was going to wear this shirt. <laughs> and Gerardo's <later>. mic. <laughs> he, was, he was like, and my mic. <laughs> well, here at the end, bro. We appreciate our, our guests, and we know life is tough, and a lot of things get left unsaid and um we like to give uh flowers when a person can, is still alive to receive them so that's what we're gonna do bro. get these flowers Holy for you bro shit. just a little thank you so that you know i appreciate you bro i love it i appreciate you coming out and i appreciate you being an awesome guest yeah don't puff up like oh, no i'm not God. puffing up i'm puffing up <laughs> don't because then i have to fucking no no you don't you stay yeah, bro. look i'm taller than him actually no he's not look at this look at these flowers I haven't seen them yet. Thank you so much. They're beautiful. My guy. I love you. Love you too, baby. Damn, it feels good to hug someone my size. This is nice. Cut the camera, cut the camera. Cut the camera.